Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. Currently we are in the 7th module of our hands on machine learning course and this 7th module is all about building machine learning models from scratch. In my previous videos I have explained you what is the intuition and math behind a linear regression model and logistic regression model and we have also seen how we can build these models from scratch in python. So the third model which we are going to discuss is a support vector machine classifier. So this support vector machine is one of the most important models that we uh, deal with in machine learning. So let's try to understand about this model. So first we will uh, try to understand the intuition behind a uh, support vector machine classifier and in the upcoming videos I will be explaining about what is the math behind it and how we can build this SPM model from scratch in Python. Okay, so that will be the order of the upcoming videos. So let's get started with today's video where we will discuss about the intuition of a SVM classifier. Okay. So first of all, let's discuss about some of the basic things about a support vector machine model. So as we know that it is uh, an example of a supervised learning model. So supervised learning model in the sense these models require data as well as labels. Say for example, let's say that we have the images of dogs and cats and we want to train a machine learning model that can recognize whether that image is a dog or a cat. So when we take a supervised learning approach, what we will do is we will feed all the images of dogs and cat to our machine learning model or a deep learning model and then we will also give the labels labels in the sense so all the dog images will be labeled as dog and all the cat images will be labeled as cat so now the model uh, the supervised learning model will try to find the relationship between all those images and their respective labels whereas if you take an unsupervised learning model uh, it won't require uh, the labels for the data set so we just give all these images but we don't mention whether it is a dog or a cat okay so what uh, does the unsupervised learning model does it it tries to group the similar images so all the dog images Images will be grouped into uh, one group and all the cat images will be grouped in another group okay so this is the difference between supervised learning model and unsupervised learning model where supervised learning model use the labeled data set where all the data will be labeled whereas unsupervised layer unsupervised data set uses a uh, data set that is not labeled okay so some examples of supervised learning model are logistic regression support vector machine and uh, some examples of unsupervised learning model are k-means clustering and other clustering algorithms okay so support vector machine is a supervised learning model and we know that there are two types in uh, supervised learning one is classification and regression and both uh, for classification and the regression purpose support vector machine model can be used okay so it can be used for both the cases but it is predominantly used for classification so we will be discussing about the support vector machine classifier okay and not regressive if time permits let's uh, discuss about regression in the later videos but for now let's discuss about a classification model that we can build using support vector machine okay so and it is also mainly used for binary classification problems and not multi class uh, classification so binary classification in the sense we will try to classify the data points into two classes say for example uh, let's say that we are predicting whether a male is a you know spam male or a normal male or we are predicting whether a person is going to get a job or not so we are just classifying into two classes or two types. So this is called as a binary class classification whereas uh Multi-class classification is the one where we have multiple classes. Say for example, we have uh, 10 different colors and we are looking at an image and trying to uh, find uh, which color that particular image is. So in that case, we have totally 10 classes, right? So these kind of uh, problems are called as multi-class classification, whereas binary classification is one where we just have two classes and support vector machine is predominantly used for binary classification. So, you know, we can also use a uh, support vector machine for multi-class, but you know, we have to do some adjustments and uh, other processes. Okay. So let's not go detail into that, but for now understand that support vector machine is mainly used for binary classification. And uh, the other two important uh, things about uh, support vector machine is that there are two terms called as hyperplane and support vectors. So these are the very basic things about uh, support vector machine. So let's discuss about what is meant by this hyperplane and uh, what is meant by this support vector. So these two are the more important factors when we are working on the support vector machine. And these two are the things which define the support vector machine model. Okay. So now let's try to understand this. Let's say that we have a data set and this data set contains two features and we need to, uh, you know, classify the data points into two groups or two classes based on these two features. Okay. So this X1 and X2 can be uh, anything. So it can be, let's say that we are trying to predict whether a person has diabetes or not. So we are taking two features for this. So one feature can be, uh, you know, the, their blood sugar level and the other factor can be uh, the BMI and so on. So we are taking two features. So now we will try to plot 
the data points in this features and as you can see here there are two different classes right so this group of classes uh, you know given in uh, blue colored data points and this data points are given in uh, green color so sometimes we can uh, draw this clear uh, differentiation between the data points so there is clearly a grouping between them right so now what a support vector machine classifier will try to do is it will try to find a hyperplane that can separate these two data points okay so as you can see a line here so this line is called as a hyperplane now uh, if we give a new data point, the support vector machine model will try to find whether that new data point lies in this group or this group. So based on that, it can uh, tell you what kind of class it belongs to. Okay, so this is how support vector machine classifier works. And uh, this line is called as the hyperplane. So uh, here we have only two dimensions. Okay, so x1 and x2. And you can see the two points here, 1 and 2. So I have named this point as 1 and 2. And these two points are called as support vectors. So support vectors are nothing but the data points which are very close to this hyperplane so the nearest points to the hyperplane are called as support vectors and if the position of the support vector changes the position of the hyperplane also changes so the position of the hyperplane mainly depends on the position of the support vectors okay so this is uh, the basic explanation of how uh, a support vector machine classifier works so it will try to find that hyperplane that can separate the data points into two classes and the two points which are very close to each other are called as support vectors so one from this group and the one from uh, this group is called as support vector okay and this is how a support vector machine model works and now let's discuss more about this so and so here as you can see here we have only two dimensions right but it is not possible to uh, separate the data points into two classes we, when we have only two uh, you know dimensions so let's take this example as you can see here we have a two dimensional uh, plot here so x1 and x2 so x1 and x2 can be any features and now you can see the two types of data points here so one set of data points are circle in shape which is blue in color and the other data points are triangle shaped and they are red in color so you cannot draw a line that can separate these two data points whereas in the previous case we have easily drew a line that can separate these data points right but we cannot do the same here so we cannot you know draw a line here so now what we can do is one thing uh, that we can do in order to separate them is increasing the dimensions so if you have a three dimensional structure like this there is a possibility that we can separate these data points so this is what we need so it is not always that we will be using a two dimensional space as we have used in this case so some data points when you have uh, two dimensions we can easily separate them but it is not possible uh, all the time so in that cases we may need to increase our dimensions now you can see here this is a three dimensional space this is a 3d space right so we have three dimensions x1 x2 x3 and these are nothing but three features so in this case we have only two features and uh, you can see this uh, grayish Plane. so this is called as the hyperplane so this is why it is basically named as hyperplane whereas in this case you can see that it is basically a line yet we call this uh, a plane right so the reason is that most of the times we will be dealing with multiple dimensions and not two dimensions so we will be creating a, a hyperplane so if you have more number of dimensions then uh, you know we have to take that multiple dimensions as well so if you have two dimensions it the plot will be in a two dimensional plot where you can have the hyperplane as a normal straight line but if it is if it is a three dimensional space you will have a 3d plane okay so this is how you can use a support vector machine model to classify data points and the one main thing you need to remember is that uh, we have a hyperplane that separate the data points and then we have the support vectors which are the nearest points to it and we often try to increase the uh, uh, you know dimensionality dimensions are nothing but the different features that we have in a data set okay so i hope everyone is clear up to this point so i'll just give you a clear definition of hyperplane and support vector machines so, sorry support vectors in this slide so hyperplane is a line when we consider it in a 2d space or a plane that separates the data points into two classes okay so it is basically a line or a plane that separates data points and it basically separates them into two classes so when you consider a two-dimensional space it will be a straight line like this when you consider a three-dimensional space or a multi-dimensional space it will be in the form of a plane okay and what is meant by the support vectors so support vectors are the data points which lie nearest to the hyperplane if these data point changes the position of the hyperplane changes okay so this is one of the main concepts of support vector machine so you can refer this diagram as well this black colored line is the hyperplane of our support vector machine and uh, you can see uh, these data points here so these are uh, named as support vectors for class 1 and support vectors for class 2 so these are the two groups of data so one is this blue colored circle the other group of data is the red colored squares okay and uh, the support vectors are mentioned here so support vectors are nothing but the data points which are closer to the uh, hyperplane so these support vectors must be 
as far as possible from the hyper plane okay so if they are uh, you know as far as possible then this support vector machine can draw a clear differentiation between them let's say that uh, you know i'll just mark it here if the data points let's say one data point lies here and another uh, you know this blue color data point lies here so in that case if there is not a you know a clear distance between them our model cannot classify the data points uh, you know easily so the support vectors must be as far as possible from this hyperplane and if the position of the support vector changes the position of the hyperplane also changes okay so that's another thing that you need to remember so uh, and another term which we can remember is the margin so the margin is nothing but the distance between uh, one support vector so support vectors of one class and the support vectors of other class so this distance is called as the margin so how a support vector machine classifier works is it's try to that uh, it's try to fit to the data set multiple times and it tries to find which can be the optimum hyperplane so once it's uh, found this uh, optimum hyperplane when you give a new data point it will try to uh, see whether that data point goes into this uh, class of data points or this class and based on that it will tell you what kind of class it is so these classes are nothing but whether a person is uh, you know uh, having diabetes or not or it can be a male is a spam male or a normal male and so on so those kind of binary classification problems and these are uh, the definitions of hyperplane and support vectors okay and finally let's discuss about what are the advantages and disadvantages of support vector machines so understanding uh, these advantages and disadvantages will let you uh, choose the best model for your problem so like when you are working on a data set we need to uh, try to understand which model suits for that particular data set so we need to understand the advantages and uh, disadvantages of each model in order to select a model properly okay and this process is called as model selections and uh, in our previous videos also in a linear regression and logistic regression also i have explained you what are what are their respective advantages and disadvantages and for now let's discuss about the same for this support vector machine classifier so it works well with smaller data sets. So this is one of the main thing. So support vector machine model is, uh, you know, one of the best model for binary classification when you have a smaller data set, when you don't have, uh, you know, a uh, large number of data points. So in that case, we can use a support vector machine and uh, it works efficiently when there is a cleaner, uh, sorry, when there is a clear margin of separation. So clear margin of separation is nothing but there should be enough space between uh, the support vectors of one class and the support vectors of the other class. As I have showed you, if there is not a clear margin that is the distance between these two support vectors the red colored one and the blue colored one if the margin is very low then the support vector machine cannot draw a clear separation between them so and it cannot uh, classify the data points clearly so there should be a clear margin of separation and there should not be any overlapping that's the idea so the two classes should not overlap overlap in the sense the two classes should not have, have any uh, similar values so that is another uh, main advantages so you can also consider this as an advantage and as well as a disadvantage okay so when there is a clear margin of separation then we can say that svm is best uh, we can use okay and the other advantage is it works well with high dimensional data as i've told you before we cannot classify the data points when there is only two dimensions so if you have higher dimensions then uh, support vector machine model works well but this is not the same in the case of uh, the models like logistic regression so those models require lesser number of dimensions because if you have higher dimensions those models will tend to overfit but support vector machine works well with high dimensional data so high dimension in the sense when you have a lot of features in your data set that is nothing but the columns you have in your data set okay so whenever you have uh, that more number of features you can go with support vector machines and when you have a low number of column and a larger data set you can go with logistic regression so this is how you can select a model if uh, the model is very small and it has a higher dimensions you can go with a support vector machine and it can also find the complex relationship between them so if the you know relationship between the data points is linear then we can use uh, the models like logistic regression or linear regression but when the relationship between the data points are very complex in that case we can use support vector machine classifier so these are some uh, some of the advantages of spm classifier and uh, now let's discuss about its disadvantage. So it's not suitable for larger data sets as the training time is higher. So this is the reason. If we have a larger data set and if the uh, data set has more number of dimensions, then the uh, 
training is going to take a lot of time so training this spm model will take a lot of time and hence we don't generally use spm when we have a very large data set but we will use it when we have smaller data set and the other disadvantage is that not suitable for noisy data set with overlapping classes the one which i have uh, explained to you so in some cases the two classes will have the data points which almost overlap with each other and in that case the margin will be very low the distance between the support vector of one class and the other class so in that case uh, the model cannot clearly define the separation between them okay so that is one disadvantage so when you have overlapping classes it is not easier noisy data set in the sense the data set which contains a lot of outliers and mistakes okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages and whenever you are choosing a model you need to weigh this advantages and disadvantages of of a different model in order to choose the best one okay so i hope everyone is uh, clear up to this point and that's it for this video the main takeaways uh, for this particular video is that support vector machine is a supervised learning model which is mainly used for classification so it can be also used for regression but it is mainly used for binary classification and we have uh, two main terms such as hyperplane and the support vector so hyperplane is the line or a plane that can separate these two uh, classes and the support vectors are the data points which are closer to this hyperplane okay so i hope everyone is sure about this and in the upcoming videos let's discuss about the math behind a spm classifier and then we can uh, move on to the hands on part where we will try to build this sp PM class pair model from scratch in Python. Okay, so uh, I'll see you in the next upload and thanks for watching.